Hello and welcome back. Today we are discussing the fourth practice problem of this series. We will be discussing deed code problem 1143, longest common subsequence. So this is actually one of the most famous problems in dynamic programming and you can probably judge that by the number of likes on the problem. Also there are many variations of LCS but here we are discussing the most trivial one. Uh, another thing about this question is that this problem gives a very good idea about how to apply dynamic programming in string based problems which comes in really handy. So let's get started but before moving to the question let's understand what exactly is a subsequence. So subsequence is a string which we obtain by deleting some, all or no elements of the given string and also all the characters in the subsequence should be in the same order as they appear in the original string. So let's say that we have a string ABCD. Now we can leave all the elements as it is and we will get a subsequence ABCD. If we delete all the characters, we'll get another subsequence which is going to be an empty string. We can delete characters A and C, we'll get another subsequence BD. We can just delete A and we'll get another subsequence which is BCD. So this way for every element or every character in the string we have a choice whether we want to keep it in the subsequence or whether we want to remove it from the subsequence. And since every character has two choices therefore we have multiple subsequences for a given string. How many subsequences actually do we have for a given string? So since every character A, B, C, D will have two choices. So the total number of different subsequences possible will be 2 into 2 into 2 into 2. So we will have total 2 raised to power 4 subsequences. And in general for a string of size n, every character will have two choices. So there will be total 2 raised to power n different subsequences. Now let's go through the problem statement. So the problem statement states that given two strings, text1 and text2, return the length of their longest common subsequence. If there is no common subsequence, return 0. And then it goes ahead and explain what do they mean by a subsequence and a common subsequence of two strings is a subsequence that is common to both the strings. Now the question is pretty simple. We need to find the length of the longest string which is a subsequence of both the given strings. Now a very brute force approach is to find all the subsequences of the first string and store them in a map. Now find the subsequences of the second string and whenever you get a subsequence check if it is present in the first map that is if it was a subsequence of the first string as well. In case if it is and it's the longest subsequence yet then update the answer. So let's say that the length of text 1 is n and the length of text 2 is m. So the time complexity for this solution will be basically 2 raised to power n plus 2 raised to power m big O of 2 raised to power n plus 2 raised to power m which is the time complexity for finding all the subsequences of a string. Now let's try to come up with a little better recursive approach wherein we do not need to find all the subsequences of both the string. So for example let's say that we have two strings so text one is a b c d f e and the second string which is text two is b a c d e f. Now we are trying to find the LCS for these two strings. Let's say that we are at the last character in both the strings which are E and F. So we are here in both the strings. In first string we are at letter E and in the second string we are at character F. Now we know that E is not equal to F. So in this case we have two possibilities. So the first possibility is that we drop E and then we will be left with two strings which is A, B, C, D, F and B, A, C, D, E, F and we try to find the longest subsequence in these two strings. The other possibility is that we drop F. So we'll be left with two strings A, B, C, D, F, E and B, A, C, D, E and then our task would be to find the longest common subsequence in these two strings. Now whichever scenario gives the longest LCS that will be the final LCS value. So when the characters do not match, we have two possibilities. We drop one character in each case and check for LCS in the remaining strings. This approach seems very close to our recursion intuition. So we will delegate the sub problems for the remaining strings to the recursive method. And using the answer, we will calculate the answer for the current problem. Now the other case is when the characters match. So in this particular case, we can see that our characters are matching. F is equal to F. So definitely this F needs to be part of our longest common subsequence. We have found one character which will definitely be part of the longest common subsequence. So it makes sense that we 
take this f and we put it in the subsequence now what would be the remaining strings so the remaining strings would be a b c d and b a c d e so these would be the remaining two strings and we'll try to find the lcs in these two strings and what will whatever will be the answer returned by these two strings we'll just add one in that answer one because we have found one character of the lcs which is f so definitely the lcs will have a length one so we will add one for that character which matched at this step so whatever the value is returned by the remaining string plus one will be the answer for this particular step now what will be the base case the base case will be if any of the remaining strings become of zero length because if any of the string becomes zero length then it is impossible to get a lcs from the remaining strings so in that particular case we would have to return from that step so again our intuition of just taking care of the current step and base case works so let's quickly go through the code for the problem so as we discussed that first we check whether the characters are matching or not if the characters are matching then we have definitely found one of the character which is going to be part of the subsequence so now we need to check lcs in the remaining strings so we delegate the task of finding the lcs in the remaining strings to our helper method or to our recursive method and we just add one for the current character which has matched and in case the characters do not match then we drop one character in each string one by one and we try to find the lcs in the remaining string so first we will drop one character in our first string and we will delegate the task to our helper method and in the second case we will drop one character from the second string and again delegated the task to find the lcs in the remaining string to our helper method and in whichever case we get the maximum size lcs that will be our final answer and that will be returned from here and as discussed the base case is if the size of the remaining strings become less than zero so we are left with an empty string there's no string left so obviously we will not be able to find any subsequence so from that case that will be our base case and we return zero from there now again this is not the most optimal solution and we get a time limit exceeded error for this solution so let's try to draw a recursion tree and find out why the solution is not an optimal solution so we'll draw a recursion tree for two strings which is gef and ghfe now at first step we have gef and ghfe so e and f do not match so we'll have to check the two possibilities we'll try to find the lcs in ge and ghfe and in the second case we'll drop e and try to find the lcs in the remaining strings which is ghf and gef now again in ge and ghfe we have found a match so we have just one possibility we'll keep this e for the subsequence and we'll find the longest common subsequence in g and comma ghf here also we have found a match so we will find the longest common subsequence in the remaining strings which is ge and gh now again in this case there is not a match between g and f so we'll have two possibilities one will be empty string and ghf and other will be g comma gh in this case also there is not a match so we'll have two possibilities either g comma gh or ge comma g now similarly this recursion tree can be expanded forward but the point i wanted to make here is that you can easily see that there is an issue of repeating sub problems here so this sub problem g comma gh and g comma gh is actually repeating and we would have calculated this sub problem twice so that is why this is not the most optimal solution and we actually have the problem of overlapping sub problems and definitely this is our directed acyclic graph so we can go ahead and apply a dynamic programming here now the first approach obviously is going to be memoization so i have not actually included the code for memoization here but it is very similar to what we have been doing till now we will declare our map and our sub problems are actually represented by i comma j so i represents the current index in text 1 and j represents the current index in text 2 so whenever we solve a sub problem we store the answer against this pair of i comma j so that we don't have to solve the same problem again so the memoization improvement is quite simple so i'm directly skipping forward so let's quickly write the recurrence relation for our problem so let's say that the function i comma j returns the length of the longest common subsequence for two strings now f of i comma j is going to be equal to f of i minus 1 comma j minus 1 plus 1 when we have found a match so text 1 of i is equal to equal to text 2 of j 
but in case where there's not a map so in that we'll drop one letter in both strings one by one and try to find the longest subsequence in the remaining strings and whichever is the maximum that is going to be the answer so this is the case when text one of i is not equal to text two of j okay i made the same mistake again text two of j so this is going to be the recurrence relation for our lcs problem now as you might have already figured out this relation can be easily modeled as a 2d matrix and we can build our answer bottom up so let's make a table and solve an example bottom up so let's say that we have two strings one is a b c d e and the other string is a c e so we'll be representing these two strings as part of a matrix so the matrix will look something like this a b c d e and a c the rows are representing ACE and the columns are representing the second string because i comma j are eventually representing index in the string so that's why i have placed these strings on the rows and columns now let's fill up our base case so that base case is when one of these strings becomes empty so let's say when this particular string or text one is empty whatever string we have in text two the answer of lcs is going to be zero because one string is empty so we cannot find any subsequence so when both these strings are empty then the answer is zero when this string is empty and the second string is just a so we are comparing these two strings then also answer is zero when the second string is a b and this string is still empty the answer is again going to be zero similarly when this string is empty and the second string is a b c the answer is going to be zero so all these values are going to be zero similarly for the first column as well so when this string is empty whatever is the value in this string or text one all these answers are going to be zero now let's start filling up all the other cells so the first cell is one comma one so in this particular cell the two strings that we are comparing are a comma a now when we have a match what we do we drop both the characters and check the lcs in the remaining string so when we drop both the characters a and a the remaining string is empty and empty and what is the lcs for these empty strings so the lcs for these empty strings is stored in this cell which is zero so the answer returned by this case will be zero and we'll add plus one because we had one match so the final answer for this case is going to be one now let's fill up the cell one comma two now the two strings that we are comparing are a and a b now in a and a b there is no match between a and b so the two options that we need to explore are either we'll drop a and we'll be exploring empty string a b or we will drop b and we'll be comparing a comma a now for a comma a the answer is stored in this cell which is one so this will return one and for empty string a b empty string a b the answer is stored in this cell so for empty string a b the answer is going to be zero so this will return zero now in this case we will find a maximum of these two answer and whatever is the maximum of these two answer will be our final answer so the answer here will also be one now let's fill the next cell so the next cell that we are going to fill is going to compare a and a b c so again there is no match between a and c so the two cases that we are going to compare are going to be empty string a b c or a and a b now for a and a b the answer is stored in this particular cell and for empty string a b c the answer is stored in this particular cell so this cell is going to return the answer zero this cell is again going to return one we are going to take a max so the final answer is going to be one so if we can see the pattern what is happening here is that so when there is a match we drop both the characters and after dropping both the characters the string that will be left will actually be the case which is the cell di diagonally above so whenever there is a match we go to the diagonally above cell see what number is stored there and just add one in that number but in the case when there is no match so we are either going to drop one letter in text two when we drop one letter in text two we are going to the situation which is the left cell and when we drop one character in text one we are going to the cell which is above which is the above cell so these two are the situations which we are going to get when there is no match so we just check what are the numbers stored in these two cells and take the maximum and store that value in our matrix 
and this is exactly the same thing that we can see in our reference relation also if there is no match then we go to the above cell and we go to the cell which is on our left and whatever is the maximum that is going to be the value of the current cell in case there is a match we drop both the characters and we go to the cell which is diagonally above to our current cell and we just add one in whatever value is stored in that diagonally above cell and the store that value in our current cell so let's go through our dp solution so for our dp solution as discussed we are first declared a helper matrix in which we are going to store the answer and the length of the row and the length of column is one greater than the size of the string that is because the first cell is going to represent the empty string that's why we have made both the column and row one greater than the actual text sizes so we have declared the helper matrix now we are going to fill the helper matrix and we have hard coded value 0 so this is going to take care of our base cases now for the other cells which are not the base cases we are starting to fill up the matrix so first we check if there is a match between the characters if there is a match between the characters then we go to the diagonally above cell take that value and just add one if there is not a match then we go to the cell on the left and to the cell above and see whichever cell has the maximum value and we just take the max of that value and store it in our current cell now each cell will have the longest common subsequence value for that combination of the text 1 and text 2 so for the complete strings the final value of the longest common subsequence for the complete strings would be actually stored in the bottom right corner of the grid so we just see that what value is stored in the bottom right corner of the grid and that is going to be the final lcs value and we simply return that value from here as the answer now coming to the time complexity and space complexity we have a helper matrix and we are parsing and filling the entire matrix one so the complexity both time and space is going to be big o of n square i hope the problem and solution is now clear and you would be able to tackle all similar problems and I'll see you in the next video, so stay tuned. Bye-bye.